Thanks, Bjorn. So, so thank you for, for, for hosting me and also to Anna, who was behind the scenes as well, uh, with inviting me here. So yeah, I'm going to talk about um, uh, this, this Bloom-Capel model. And uh, I mean, I wanted to, I'm, I'm mainly going to be focusing on some joint work with Dima Krachen and Christophorus Panagiotis, who are both in Geneva. So Christophorus is a postdoc there, Dima is a she should that and Dima is coming here next year, so I advertise him to you. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if he's here or if he's going to be at the university. At the university? Okay. So, uh, yeah, um, let, let, let me, uh, before I explain like qualitatively what the model is, let me just give you the definition on a finite graph so that everyone is happy. So, uh, So I'm going to fix uh, just a finite graph, which you will always think of it as a subgraph of, as a finite uh, subgraph of, of ZD. Uh, and there are two parameters that uh, are going to be uh, relevant. So it's a two-parameter model. There's, there's a beta, which is a positive thing, which right, is inverse temperature. Uh, and there's a, a parameter, which is a, a real number which has a very grandiose name, and maybe it'll become clear for you, uh, if not, it's fine. Yeah. So it has the grandiose name of crystal field strength, and the Bloom, uh, the Bloom model is a measure on spin configurations which are plus and minus one and zero valued on your, on your verts. So your, your, if you want your configuration space, so it's a measure uh, on spins, Spin configurations, which are plus minus one and zero on the vertices, and it has the following uh, the following weight. So maybe I should write all the decorations. Okay. The usual nearest neighbor interaction of, of the Ising model, uh, which is just the, the beta sigma x and y. And then I have an extra term here, uh, which only affects the vertices, which is delta sigma x squared. And I'm going to write this in a, so this is, I've written it as e to the minus h, and, and I've put the minus signs already, so I hope you're all right with that. Uh, I'm going to write it in, in, a, in a more probabilistic way, which is a bit more of relevance to this whole talk. Uh, which is uh, just by writing as a product of exponentials. Okay, so uh, it's just a measure on, on spin configurations with that weight. So that's the blue model on a, on a finite graph. And, and, and just before I go forward, is, it, is everyone happy with this? Is it, is it clear what this is? Okay, great. Now I have to figure out how these boards work. <laughs> okay, so let's make two observations. So what's the first one? Um, so as delta goes to um, minus infinity, what's happening? Well, you're, in your measure, you're going to wait uh, more configurations which have a lot of zeros. So uh, at least on a finite graph, your measure is converging to a direct, a, 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 a zero measure or something. So, uh, okay, is that clear? As it goes to minus infinity. So then if you have sigma x being plus or minus one, then you get e to the minus delta. Oh, well, you get e to the delta, but it's e to the minus something positive. And then when it's zero, you get one. So it's going to weight more the, the zeros. So then you get a zero measure. And uh, on the other limit, uh, what you get, well, then, then your spin configurations is going to concentrate on, on uh, something which is only plus and minus valued, but with the same weight as the easing, uh, as, as the easing Hamiltonian. So in particular, you get the easing model. So you get convert us easily. So that's nice. And now you see uh, why at least I, I was interested in this. Um, okay, so on the one hand, you have a connection to easing. 
the zero is trivial. I just wanted to point it out so that everyone's oriented. And now let's let's uh, let's do something a bit uh, uh, a bit more. So, yeah, they looked easy the one with the sword. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that. You're spoiling the story, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so, like Ron said, I mean, you can look at the law of the of the sigma x squared, or, or if you want, the pluses and the, the ones and the zeros. So, in in other words, the underlying site population. And so, as beta goes down to zero, you're going to get a Bernoulli site percolation. And what's the parameter? Well, okay, I, I, you, if you're bored, you can check the parameter, but it's uh, you open sites with uh, this parameter. I hope it's kind of clear because uh, you have a plus and minus, so you have 2e to the delta, and then when it's uh, zero, you get one, so then it's, it's this. Okay, so then you see two of, the, uh, of, uh, of our favorite models in statistical physics. And uh, as Ron said, and sport the story, it's a, it's a, it's an easing model uh, on uh, a site percolation, but with annealed, uh, with annealed disorder. So it's not a quenched model. Okay. Um, all right. So. How does this work? Maybe I do this. In, in Geneva, we don't have uh, boards which go up and down, so I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, where, where does this model um, come from? Uh, so, 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 are you all happy with the mathematical definition of the model? So, so, so I can go into a bit of the so the blah blah now. So, so it's introduced. It was introduced in 66 uh, by, by uh, uh, Bloom. So introduced by Bloom. I think uh, was not so far away from here. I think he, he was uh, maybe in Yale, I, I can't remember, uh, to study uh, magnetization of uranium oxide. And in particular, uh, some interesting phenomena that were observed that, that you could get a phase transition, um, which went from uh, a discontinuous phase transition, and I'll define what that means, to a continuous phase transition. So uh, a kind of a, uh, um, yeah, okay, the models sort of want to be continued. Okay, and then it was later studied by Capel for some for the same reason. Uh, I should okay, this is recorded. I should at least mention Capel. Um, uh, okay, but that's where what they did really stopped. I mean, where, where, where what they did is 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 is, is, is uh, something relevant for us. And, and uh, so later it was realized that this model actually has a, a pretty rich phase diagram. So. So what do I mean by phase diagram? Uh, I mean, you see, I define everything on, on, on a finite graph, but uh, in, in, this, uh, in this field, every, I mean, the, the relevant quantities of interest are all, in, are all on infinite graphs. So I, I want to discuss the, the phase transition before I tell you why it's, uh, what's the rich phase diagram. Okay. So there, there are two canonical, I mean, you can take uh, weak limits as, as your finite subgraphs of ZD goes to, um, goes to the whole of ZD. And there are two uh, canonical measures that, or three that you want to study. And this is when you impose boundary conditions. So, so if you want, by imposing boundary conditions, I mean, so mu plus of G of the stuff is just gonna be your measure conditioned on your spins at the boundary being plus valued so on, and then mu zero is going to be conditioned on having zeros and so on and so forth. Okay. By the way, mu minus and mu g are related by spin flips. It's, it's clear or is there something uh, unclear or? No. Okay. okay. So, so the relevant quantities of interest are, are the, the limits of this, uh, which is the free measure.
and the plus measure. And it's well known that there's a, there's a for every, if, if I fix a delta, there's a critical point depending on delta. So there's a beta C delta such that uh, for beta large enough, uh, I magnetize, meaning that the expectation of the spin at zero is positive for this plus measure. And then for beta small enough, I am I'm not uh, I have zero magnetization. So, um, so uh, there's a beta C. So for well, delta, it's easy to see a delta, which is, which is not trivial, such that if a beta is less than beta c, then this guy uh, is, is zero. And if beta is greater than beta c, okay. So this is this is the, the phase transition. I'm going to rub out the history because I kind of want to stick on this side and and it's folklore, but it's not impossible to prove that that uh, as you look at the function delta to beta c of delta, it gives you a curve of critical like a continuous line of critical points in your beta delta plane. So I draw delta is minus infinity here, which, uh, which goes from infinity. So if you have, remember delta is minus infinity gives you just zeros. So you just arbitrarily set beta c as infinity here. Uh, and then it goes like this. And then here you get, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so this is now beta c and e. Is there engineering the quality for this model? There is a, yeah. So, so this is a, um, for, for basically, if you want, for any ferromagnetic uh, spin system, which is scalar, you're going to have uh, FKG and, and GKS because this is just a single site measure. Uh, like you can absorb it into the right. single site measure, right? So FKG is fine, but the Geneva is maybe a bit different. Oh, uh, well, it depends what you say by Geneva. I mean, it has it's it has missing beat. Yes, it has one. It has a uh, stiff correlations. Okay. So um, this, this is the, the, the curve of critical points. And the, the central question of, of interest in, I mean, look, maybe not the central, but uh, the, the, the kind of step zero of, of looking at critical phenomena, uh, at least for me, is to understand uh, what's happening at beta C. So, so the kind of... So is uh, beta C. Yeah, is it equal to zero or is it, is it uh, strictly positive? So points where it's positive. So let me just say equal to zero. Uh, this is called a point of continuous phase transition. And if it's strictly positive, this is called uh, discontinuous. So I use the calculation uh, terminology. I think uh, sometimes in physics, they call this second order and this uh, first order. But here I, I, I say from this. So, so points of continuous phase transition are, are, at least on a probabilistic point of view, I mean, much more interesting in the sense that they're associated with uh, kind of non-trivial non correlation, uh, yeah, non-trivial behavior of correlations and, and uh, in two dimensions, fractal uh, geometry. Okay, so this, so let, let's go back to why this was historically studied. So um, I'm gonna leave this one and just use these. Okay, so it's historically uh, studied because uh, it was observed that in these systems, uh, you had one region of your phase diagram where uh, the thing was discontinuous and one region where it was continuous. So 
It was observed that. Let me draw red for, for discontinuous. It's not too bad for you, but it's fine. Okay, so, so the model was uh, uh, kind of conjectured to, conjecture to go under a, a, a kind of a, a multi-critical point or tricritical point in this case, where your phase transition changed from discontinuous to continuous along the critical line. And this point here um, is, is it, it's, uh, it's expected to be a unique point. And it's, uh, it's, it's called, can you see the blue by the way? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we're going to use orange. So this point is expected to be unique. So in other words, that you have uh, really, it's the boundary point between the two separating areas. And it's called the tricritical point. So Bjorn is going to stop me 10 minutes before time so I can tell you some cool things about the tricritical point in a bit more depth. So we'll do some science fiction at the end, but like informed science fiction. Um, but let me just kind of spoil it a little for you. So the tricritical point is expected to be of relevance in dimensions two and three. Uh, and in dimension two, it's meant to be in a different universality class to uh, critical easing. So it's, 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 I mean, I don't know if this speaks to you, but the central charge is not a half, it's expected to be seven tenths or something like this. And we'll, 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 I'll explain this uh, in the 10 minutes field. Uh, and in dimension three, it's, it's also expected to have an interesting behavior because dimension three is, is expected to be the upper critical dimension for, for this point. So you're expected to see marginal triviality for the scaling limit of uh, tricritical uh, blue. Okay, so is everyone happy with uh, what is expected? To, I mean, yeah. This is a little in analogy with the dilute and dense regimes of the uh, Lupoin model. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about Lupoin, so we can, yeah, we can discuss that up. But Lupoin makes sense in any dimension or just two? I mostly think of two. Okay, you can do something. Okay. All right, so, so, so now let me, uh, let, let's do some math and, and let me tell you the theorem. Uh, so the theorem, which is with, with uh, my wonderful collaborators, is that uh, in, in any dimension, uh, there exists at least one tricritical point. We can't say anything about uniqueness, but... So, uh, okay, I'm going to uh, draw a picture because it's easier to explain. It's kind of delta minus plus, and uh, here you are continuous, and here you're discontinuous. Okay. Is that is that clear from the picture? I don't need to write it. In. And so in between, in between we don't know. So let me state in dimension three for sure we don't know. In dimension two, we have some information. So, so in dimension two, uh, we can at least say that any tricritical point is of continuous phase transition. So we can't rule out that it looks something like this. So, so we can't rule out that. But at least we can say that any boundary point, so any candidate critical point is a continuous. Okay. We cannot say that in 3D. So, so in other words, we can say that the set of discontinuous critical points is open. Uh, and moreover, we can say that uh, uh, when you are in a yellow point, in a point of continuous phase transition, you have polynomial decay of correlation. Okay. 
and what is that expected to be? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, but it's a quarter, I, I guess, along um, along the yellow lines. Probably, probably right. So, so the most interesting thing would be that there. Yeah. Uh, and there, I don't know how. I mean, you would read it off from what the prediction of the central charge is, right? Yeah. Well, well yeah. I don't know how to read it off though. That's my <laughs> uh, so so maybe I should just say one thing that um, uh, I yeah okay so it's connected to CLE five and uh, and uh, sixteen over five as opposed to three and sixteen over three freezing. So I don't know if that helps you read it off, but yeah. Okay, so so how do you distinguish it from the from second order? Oh, we can't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the thing that's, that's, that, that, that's I think question. yeah, that's that's a really nice question, and that's hard. So that's what I want to talk about in the in the science okay. fiction. Because okay, it's not entirely true that we I mean there's no rigorous way of doing it, but there's some heuristics, and uh and in particular uh by looking at uh okay. like Ron likes uh looking at the law of the zeros, so looking at the the law of the zeros is a percolation process, so it has a critical point or a critical line. And uh, it might be that we have a heuristic that it might be that actually the tricritical <laughs> point corresponds to a confluence of two lines. And I'll explain that at the, uh, at the end, uh, maybe in questions, uh, but uh, it requires developing a bit this ge this, these uh, geometric representations. So in a way, what you're showing is that these, uh, that the set of discontinuous stuff is open. Yes. Yes, 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 exactly. So in particular, we get a set of, we, we, we say that along this line, you have a certain dichotomy on the behaviors of crossing probabilities. And um, the criterion for discontinuous is somehow a finite, uh, a finite size criterion. So if you're disc, I mean, if you assume that, um, uh, yeah, if you assume that the boundary point is discontinuous, then you can always perturb it a little bit and you still get exponential decay. So that, that will come. Great. That will come. So my goal is to give you the proof in three dimensions and above first, because it's very easy. Uh, and surprisingly easy, actually, a bit frustratingly. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go as far as I can with 2D and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, are there any questions about the theorems or? No, it's, yeah. So there's a, there is a line there, you yeah, delta, your delta plus, right? Or per, whatever it is, per plus. <laughs> yeah, delta plus. Yeah, it's a bound, yeah. yeah. You're gonna see, okay, so I should even then, write. And you can show that's all second. Yes, yeah, so, so anything, I mean, we cannot say that it's not the tricritical, but it's probably, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely not, right? So uh, we're going to get an estimate that it's minus log two, uh, and it's gonna come from a mapping to a ferromagnetic easing model. And it's only ferromagnetic provided this is true. And then we're gonna apply the proof of easing, basically. But I, I just wanna say one thing, the proof of discontinuity in all dimensions is, uh, this is more classical, this is uh, Perigoff's in I theory. Uh, they, they do a slightly different parameterization, but it's 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 classical. And, and the difficult part is always proving continuous phase transition. Yeah. So I'm only going to focus on that. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so, so the observation is just trivial here, uh, but it's surprising that no one has this observation, uh, which is the following. So remember, you, okay, you have a, a, bloom config, a bloom spin, which is plus minus and zero value. And uh, you can always write this as, a, as an average of two plus and minus spins. <laughs> So I can write sigma x is one half 
tau one x plus tau two x. So certainly it's it's a it's a um I mean, okay, depending on the size you've got. This this is a uh, a one to many mapping because if you have a zero spin, of course you can just flip. This can be plus one and this can be minus one or the other way around. But then it's 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 it's, it's perfectly fine and well defined on on plus and minus uh, configurations. So by the way, the fact that you see that there's, it's, a, it's a one to two mapping on the zeros leads you to the two to the number of zeros and that gives you log two when you, when you do things, okay? So, so this observation uh, alone doesn't tell you that there's a mapping to easing, okay? Because you still have the weight. This is just saying the configurations are mapped. But now if we, if we look at the, Let's just forget the product of everything and just look at that. Then um, this guy is okay because you write this as a half this plus a half this, and then you're going to just get the coupling constant divides by four. And pictorially, I mean, so so it's very trivial to, to realize this, and pictorially, it's perhaps the more relevant way of viewing it. So you take a, a spin at x, uh, and what you do is you duplicate it, so you have kind of two vertices. Let, let me draw an, an edge actually. So. So this is the Bloom world, and you have an edge here, and what you do, this is telling you that uh, here, you see when I, put, when I put this mapping in here, I divide by four, so I split my edges by four basically. So I have, uh, okay, so for each, for each edge, I do, for each vertex, I put two vertices, and then I, I add the right number of edges. Do, do you see that, Tom, or is it okay? No. So, I don't know. okay. So I've gone from, uh, I've gone from the sigma variables to the tau variables. And I'm saying that, what does this mapping correspond to? It corresponds that each edge, I'm going, each vertex, sorry, I'm going to split the vertex into two, okay? Now, if I look at beta sigma x sigma y, I can then write this as beta over four, uh, tau one x tau um, one y plus tau one x tau two y plus tau uh, two x tau one y plus tau two x tau two y, right? And if I draw a yellow edge for every interaction, which is rescaled by four, because it's now beta over four, I get that this interaction here maps, maps to this. Because this is tau one, if you want, this is sigma x, sigma y, and this is tau one x, tau two y, sorry, tau two x. A special case Gaskin Teller model, or is it really different? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's the same as the Ashkin Teller, because this is kind of two not uncoupled easing models, right? Yeah, you're coupled, you have some coupling. Yeah, but you're going to have another coupling here. Yes. So I don't think you. I don't think it's the same. So, but, but to uncoupled, to uncoupled easing is also asking that it's uh, some space. But, but here you go. Okay, so so maybe I, I don't know the model. I mean, I, I this mapping is not hard, so I wouldn't be surprised. It would be nice though. It might help. Yeah. So I, I don't think so though, because here you're going to see that you actually okay. So you you see here what you do is you you don't have any edges. You, you add an edge between these two, right? Uh, and what's the coupling constant? Well, it's delta. So I should say here the coupling constant is beta over four. And here it's delta, but there's a, a minus, uh, um, sorry, there's a plus log two that comes from uh, kind of two to the number of zeros. So that just comes when you write, when you rewrite uh, the partition functions. So in particular, um, yeah, in particular, you find that it's only ferromagnetic when delta is greater than minus log two. Okay, so is that at least the beta over four clear from writing this? Yeah, and, and the, the log two you can kind of you can kind of see it because you remember if you write the equality of partition functions, you have the sum of tau's, and then you want to say you want to look at the the tau to sigma map, and this is not a bijection, right? So you see a two to the number of something. And that's going to clearly affect that. So, the, no, I, so what do you do when you have this delta plus log two? What does that represent? Okay, so a priori, it's just telling you that the blue model, correlations of the blue model, 
and correlations of the easing model with this inhomogeneous coupling are the same. Yeah, but where is it? Where does the delta come in? Or it has it? You don't need it. What? Where does this delta plus log two come in? You have okay. it in red. The delta comes from this guy, right? Yeah, but how does it appear in the taps? That's what I... Oh, because you write sigma x squared is uh, going to be a half. So sigma x squared, right, is a uh, one quarter. Maybe there's a delta over four. I, I, maybe it's all over four. So you get, um, yeah, you get uh, what? Tau one x uh, squared, which is just one, so you don't care. Tau one, tau two x squared plus two tau one x tau two x, right? Yes. And so, in particular, you're going to see that this uh, this terms drop out, and you don't care, right? They're just one. <laughs> And then you're going to see interaction between the tau one and the tau two weighted by the delta. But then, like I said, when you rewrite the partition function, you see that it's not one to one. Okay, so the, I, I, well, I guess I was missing is that line. You have a red line between the two. Yes. That's the coupling. Yes. So in particular, <laughs> the blue model when you want lots of zeros has anti-ferromagnetic edges on the red, which is kind of fair if you think about it. Because if you want to be zero, then you need opposite parity. So you want an anti-ferromagnetic edge. Okay. Yeah, everyone happy? Okay, cool. Um, so then, then we're happy because we're in the world of easing. Um, let me just say, so, so, so then the proof, I claim the proof is done and probably you can see for, for, for high dimension. So for D uh, greater than three, we're done. Why? Because you've represented correlations of the bloom in terms of correlations of a for bloom for delta greater than minus log two, in terms of correlations of a ferromagnetic easing model. So if you know that tau one x, let's say tau i x, uh, tau j zero for the for the easing with inhomogeneous coupling goes to zero as x goes to infinity. So if you know the free correlations are going to zero, this implies by a result of Hugo, Michael, and, and Vladas. So put the eyes on it. And also Aaron Raufi. That um, this implies uh, that the magnetization is, is zero for. For the plus. So with boundary conditions, I didn't tell you what to do, but you just deterministically map uh, the, 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 the things to plus or to zero. So what, what's the statement there again? So yes. Okay. So you take easing on uh, on any graph, which is amenable and vertex transitive. Then uh, if the free correlations are going to zero, then you know that the uh, magnetization is zero. So you have continuous phase transition at B to C. So I should say this is at B to C. At the critical points. So in, in three dimensions above, what's guaranteeing this is, in, is the infrared bound. Uh, and you're applying the infrared bound in particular to the free correlations of blue, because it's reflection positive. And that tells you that the free correlations of uh, the, the easing are going to zero. So infrared bound is telling you that if I look at sigma zero, sigma x under the free for the blue, this is going to be okay. I'm cheating a little bit, but uh, if you had MMS, this would tell you this is MMS, right? And for D is three and above, it's it's honestly fair. Uh, and and particular, it's going to zero. Okay, so the proof of this is is via the random current representation, which doesn't. I mean, okay, in part of the folk, in part of like the science fiction, I want to talk about random current for Bloom, but maybe it's not. Nice. What what did Ralphie do? It was not in the first paper, right? So he had the second proof? Yeah, so he, I mean, the, the first paper was really for ZD. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was just about continuity. And, and Aaron gave a, a proof of the, the structure of translation with invariant Gibbs states for general amenable graphs. And still you have the, the infrared bound of general amenable graphs. No, 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 no. So he said that uh, if this, then that. Yes, yeah, so okay. if, if the infimum of these correlations is zero, okay. then, uh, then you are continuous, yeah. Okay, so D equals three, we're done and we're happy.
and, and then for d equals two, this fails catastrophically because uh, infrared bound is going to fail, right? Okay, so is everyone happy with d three and above? It's kind of cute and trivial, right? And, and, and he's, yeah, okay, cool. So I promise you, like, elegant is the word. Oh, nice, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> So D equals two is where the juice is. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, so, so the story of this is that, that we, were, we were thinking about this and uh, uh, we were surprised actually at how effective all the techniques for easing are in, in applying to this. And so you'll see that in D equals two. Uh, it's kind of cool because this is the, uh, I don't know, Tom, maybe you know, but I don't know any other multicritical point that's been established rigorously. Um, the Lupo N model. Lupo N is okay. In the kind of this line of critical but, point of Ninhaus is a tri critical. Wait, but do you change universality class as you go along the line? I mean, it's the line that separates the two universality class, the dense and the first order. Ah, okay. So then, yes, because it's not the same as for pots, right? For pots, you can't view Q plus four as a tri critical point no. because it's changing. Yeah, okay, actually, I don't know about Q equals four, maybe also, but, 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 no, but I'm saying I don't think it is a, I don't think you can view it as a tricritical point because really the universality class is not the same for Q less than four. Right? Well, I three dimensions. Changes depending on Q, that's what you mean. Yes, yeah. in 2D. Oh, uh, yeah, in three dimensions, of course, it's worth powerful. <clears throat> ah, he has some <clears throat> on, on pots. Well, not on pots, but it's tricritical. Oh yeah, so so that 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 was a yeah. five or six model. Yes, yeah. So, so so that's the heuristic why you expect it to be marginally trivial. Yeah, exactly. So I think he establishes that. Right? Yeah, and and the, if you take if you take the the so so just as a, a segue on that because it's just it's very natural. Uh, if you want to look at phi six with an unconstrained coupling, then you can realize phi six as a limit of. Uh, of uh, a Griffith Simon type limit of uh, blue models at the tricritical point on the on the uh, complete graph. Uh, what, what you do is you take your lattice and you put complete graphs on each vertex. So, so just uh, uh, comment on what you said, Tom. Okay. So, how long do I have for D equals two? Um, so it's not forty. So you have like fifteen more minutes in total. Fifteen more minutes. Ah. Okay. Okay. I, I accelerate. <laughs> We ask too many questions. <laughs> no, 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 it's great. it's great. Okay, so the proof in D equals two is going to go as follows. Uh, let, let me tell you the large scale thing and then we'll, we'll successively find it. So we're going to establish that sigma zero, sigma x uh, on the free is going to add B to C, um, is going to go to zero of, let's say, for delta greater than. Minus log two, uh, which is then automatically going to allow you to use the uh, random current proof for, for a reason. Okay. Uh, and, and the way we're going to establish this uh, is as follows. So we're going to we're going to use a, a percolation representation of correlations. So there's a dilute random cluster representation. <laughs> and in particular, we're going to establish a Russo Simo, uh, a RSW, Russo Simo Welsh type theory of uh, crossing probabilities uh, and uh, establish a dichotomy result, which is going to tell us the following. So the juice, if you, you want, the following dichotomy. Which is going to tell us that at PC, at, at, the tri at any critical point, either you have crossing probabilities. So, yeah, I write it down and then I explain. So let's see. So, you have the, remember, the plus measure corresponds, uh, this is plus. Let, let me just do it like this. You know what? I'll say it qualitatively. So either crossings are under 
So I'm realizing that without introducing this, uh, it's, 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 it's a nightmare to, to tell you what the dichotomy is. But uh, OK, I, I, let me write in terms of the spin, sorry. So either you have that uh, sigma 0, sigma x under the free measure is going to 0 exponentially fast. Uh, and yeah, so, so this is telling you actually that you are in a discontinuous phase transition or uh, sigma zero sigma x is uh, so there's, it's, it's going to uh, zero polynomially fast. But these are two different exponents, so we can't get tight on the exponent. Okay, so so at the, the point of the dichotomy is it tells you that at the, at the critical point, regardless of whether it's discontinuous or continuous, your free your free connections are going to zero. Either exponentially fast or, 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 or polynomially fast. By the way, the reason why this is discontinuous is because I didn't tell you what's happening with the plus correlations. That's going to the magnetization squared exponentially fast. Okay. So uh, so once you have this, ah, oh, then you're then you're happy. You don't care. You, you you're you're in the easing world when delta is greater than minus log two, and you know the free correlations are going to zero regardless. So it's a, a posteriori is telling you you're continuous. Okay, so of course you expect that the that the uh, tricritical point is not minus log two, and we have a proof of minus log four. But then, okay, yeah, fair. It's push it a little bit. It's not. <laughs> I don't present you that. But um, so yeah, that's the that's the juice. The juice is to prove this dichotomy that this holds. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to say one thing, which is kind of cute, but I think it's very misleading. So if you think about it. Uh, you're getting continuity not only for the blue model in dimension two, but also for an easing model with a non-planar interaction. But it's a bit artif artificial, I think. Uh, but I'll be honest with that. I, it's cute that it's it's not. So so you see continuity for easing, which is non-planar in d equals two, is 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 wide open in general. So uh, it just turns out that if you have this weird graph which looks like this, uh, you can map it to this planar model and then analyze it. I mean, continuity for easing on a slab has been done, no? Or for percolation, it's been done. It has not been done for easing. No, no, it's quite different for easing. But, but for percolation, yes. So, so it's different, you say. Yes. Okay, I didn't know. Yes. So, so if you think of uh, Hugo's result with Vincent Eisenman and, and uh, Simon Watzel on the Fafian structure of correlations, mm -hmm. there they prove the result. Under, I mean, they, they prove the result uh, assuming it's continuous and not assuming it's continuous. So, so they, they do it under both, uh, you know, they assume uh, both things. Okay. Uh, all right, so, so I have 10 minutes left, you said? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, if you want to see the dilute random cluster representation and more on that, I can do that. Uh, I just wanted to spend just a few minutes at uh, like, doing something which is kind of cool and <laughs> looking at uh you know where's next because this is uh i mean this is a model which techniques are working for so there are lots of interesting questions so why not uh, attack it so right Okay, so if you look at the, the phase diagram for the model, um, you, you have your line of critical points, but you also have uh, a percolation transition line for, for your, uh, site per your underlying site percolation, right? So you're marginal on the sigma x squared. <laughs> Oh, that's not color. So here's a here's a question. You're you're happy with me doing something which is like not fully rig. I mean, there, there's some rigorous uh, justification, but it's not been proven. And it's I think it's a cute problem to try and prove it. You happy with that for the last five minutes? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a question. I, I, I don't like the word conjecture for something which is maybe not surprising. I don't know. So um, 
here, here you have your, your, your line of critical points. And here you have your, uh, your percolation uh, threshold the law of sigma, sigma x. OK, so um, it's, it would be kind of cool. Uh, here we're in d equals 2. Because in d 3 and above, I don't think this is true. So there's some evidence that actually what's happening at the tricritical point is related to uh, maybe that you're, you're at the, you're reaching this uh, critical, I mean, you're seeing that you're, you're critical for the underlying site percolation or, or almost. So let me try and uh, explain that. So let's look at uh, the expectation of zero and let's say we're in a box here. Okay. I, I want to make sure I understand this, this yellow line you have. Yeah. What does it mean? So you look at when the ones have an infinite cluster. Okay. Yeah. So you don't know a priori what happens on the yellow line, but above it, you have an infinite cluster of ones, and below it, you don't. Okay. Ones or minus ones, that's the point. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, ones or minus ones. I, I, I had in mind the sigma x squared. Okay, so, so let's, let's assume- We don't know anything about that. We know, do we know that second order there or not? Along the cluster. You mean, you mean on, the, on the yellow yeah. line? Yeah. No idea. I mean, I would expect, okay, maybe, let, let me not say I would expect, but, but I guess you would maybe expect this to be in the same universality class as Bernoulli percolation, I would. especially because this is exactly Bernoulli site percolation. Uh, and then at the tricritical point, it's not clear. I mean, it may be in a different universality class. I don't know. And, and when you're discontinuous, I mean, then your, your measures are not the same if you have plus and you have three. So then it's, it's a first order. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, let's suppose that you, you, you make the assumption. Uh, uh, so, so, you know, it's maybe too strong to assume that, uh, that zeros are not percolating, uh, but maybe let's weaken it and say that zero and minuses are not percolating under the free measure. So assume uh, zero union minus don't percolate. By the way, this, this argument here is, is, is based on a really beautiful argument by Vendelin Brother on continuity freezes. Uh, so they don't per percolate under mu zero. So then what does this mean? If they don't percolate under mu zero, that means that every, I mean, you're going to see infinitely many circuits of pluses, a star connected circuits of pluses, right? So and about every scale, you're going to see infinitely many star circuits of pluses. Uh, and and uh, what you can do is you can condition, let, let's say you condition on the largest one or the, the, the one which is closest to the uh, boundary here. So, uh, right, so what do I want to say? Yeah, okay, so you're going to condition on this and then you have a domain Markov property for your measure, right? Uh, so this is going to be great. I mean, yeah. Okay. So you can kind of condition on your on your uh, exterior star connected plus exterior most. And you can realize this uh, uh, as um, you know you've conditioned on your circuit, and 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 there you you have plus boundary conditions on your circuit, right? Uh, and then you have monotonicity and boundary conditions, which is telling you that if you are plus in the circuit, uh, you are, your, your correlation is going to be greater than if you have plus infinite volume. So then when you resum, you're going to get that this is greater than, than plus, which is telling you automatically from the monotonicity of uh, correlations, uh, you, you know, you have quite a volume that you take this to. But then you're going to have that, that the, the sigma zero plus and sigma zero three is the same. And so then you are, you are continuous, right? There are things of Georgi or something like that approaches this for so, the usual reason. Sorry? You, you said when the Werner was saying, the, I mean, so the, at least this part is also of Georgi, so it's a bit uh, ah, okay. maybe Gucci, maybe. Oh, I didn't know this earlier. I didn't know this. I've, I've only seen it in Benlin's uh, calculation. So, okay, yes. 
Okay, thanks. So, so it's, it's a very, it's a very naive observation. Uh, I mean, for, for, from, from easing to bloom, I mean, it's just applying what they did. And it's a very beautiful argument for easing. Uh, but here you're already seeing that if you add in the zero, if you add in the minus spins, then already you are in the continuous, uh, and you assume they don't percolate, you're already in the continuous regime. So it's, it, I don't know, I mean, I, I like this, uh, I like this uh, kind of conjecture that actually probably what's happening at the, uh, when you are away from track critical point is that this is not percolating in a very strong sense. Um, but when you are at the track critical point, it's somehow coming to this threshold. So do I have like two minutes? Okay. Um, why did I ask that? So, so, so your, your track critical point is going to be where, the, where these curves meet, I suppose, right? Right. So that's the that, that's, that's the question. The question. Yeah. 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 That's the question. So so the, the question is this is kind of telling you that it's got something to do with percolation of zero spins. So what's the precise thing here? Is it really the confluence of these lines or or not? So um, yeah. What is did that I remember the physics literature? Is that, did they make a statement? Lines? I have to admit, I haven't uh, read the physics literature so much. Um, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Uh, at least this is a mathematical just a heuristic for, for why this could be true. Uh, okay. And then I wanted to maybe, yeah, I, I think I'll leave that <laughs> and we can discuss other things in questions. I mean, uh, there, there are all sorts of, yeah, let me say one last thing that, that you know, so this is, this is one question which is very nice. And that there is perhaps a route uh, to trying to establish. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to. to yeah, uh, th there is perhaps a route to try and attack this kind of regime, where uh, assuming this picture. So if you assume this picture is roughly true, let's say you're in this per regime. So then you know, or at least you you expect that your site percolation is very supercritical. So you have lots of ones, uh, lots of sigma x squared is ones, and not many zeros. Then you could try and hope to understand easing on a percolation cluster, which is supercritical, uh, and try and understand uh, whether you can get universality of, of this, right? Um, so there's a reason, uh, let's say even quenched universality. I know, Tom, the, the model with quenched is not expected to be the same. I think you were telling me it's got like a long, long. But, but for energy and energy and spin spin, I mean, this is at least a bit more attackable. So I think let me end there, and then uh, if there are questions, uh, uh, or if you want to understand the renormalization, then I, I can show that. Okay. So we already had a lot of questions, but are there any more? Uh, you mentioned random current representation from Bloom Campbell. Could you talk more about that? Yeah, you could do a random current representation. It's very, uh, but, but the point is switching lemma is not obvious now. So, so when you want to do switching, so let, let me uh, maybe write this because it's kind of cool. Um, so what's random current? Random current is just expanding the exponential and realizing correlations in terms of uh, kind of source, uh, well, yeah, integer valued functions on edges with source. So you can still write, uh, let's say, uh, sigma zero, sigma x for Bloom as the sum of a currents of sources is zero x of some weight, which now depends on something uh, divided by. But, but now your currents are going to be supported on the underlying site percolation, if you want, right? So you, when you do the expansion, you're going to see that you, you need delta n to be zero whenever you have a zero vertex, otherwise it's, it, your whole thing is zero. So any charge is those. So if you want delta uh, n is supported on the site. I, I write this informally, but you see what I mean. But now suppose you want to do, what, what's the use of random currents? Uh, it's, it's, it's really with switching, right? You want a probabilistic representation of, of uh, squared correlations. But then uh, one of the things that you need when you want to do switching, so you look at, for example, this thing squared, and then you get these two things squared. And, and, and switching goes by, by XORing with a path, which is from zero to X, right? Uh, in both, so, so if you have these two living on, the, on different graphs, you XOR through a path in the intersection of the graphs. So this is telling you that if you want to do switching, you need there to be a path, a common path in the intersection of the site percolations um, uh, from zero to X, okay? So in general, this is not true. Uh, so, so you would get switching inequalities, which tell you that when you do have a path, 
then you're fine. Uh, but then you have an extra term, which is saying that, you know, I, I mean, if you want, it's telling you that there's a, in maybe in one of the currents, you have a disconnecting circuit, which is uh, for one of the site populations. Is that kind of, yeah, okay. I, I'm just saying that switching is uh, less trivial. And that's, you, you expect that because uh, otherwise, I mean, you expect that because there's a discontinuity part. So, yeah. You mentioned that there is a mapping from a non-planar to a planar graph. Could you say a word or something about that? It's, it's this mapping to easing. It's an easing model on a non-planar graph, right? Because you have the- How do you planarize? Sorry? How do you planarize it? You can't. So what do you do? You said that you do have something planar eventually. Oh, but no, the blue model is on the planar graph. Right, so you do the uh, techniques for the blue model then, you, whatever was needed from planarity, you do it on the blue yes. side? Yes, yes, exactly. So in other words, we analyze crossing probabilities for the dilute random cluster model rather than the random cluster. Uh, okay. And that you can use planar, planar of yours. You lose exact planar duality, but you have approximate planar duality. Okay. Like the model is not self dual Is it self dual at the specific choice of parameter? No, there's no, there's, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's no obvious self duality like for random cluster models. I mean, so that's why when we're doing the dichotomy, uh, we have to be slightly careful with how we do. And then let me give you one, one indication that the, the dual is, is not quite there. If you, in the easing, in the FK world, if you condition on, on a circuit of closed edges, you're going to recover the free measure, right? Yeah. But then in the dilute FK world, you don't recover the free measure. This is stochastically dominated. So yeah, this is stochastically dominated by the free measure where you have to lose. <laughs> so, so the point is, is that if you have the stochastic domination, then you can check that all the RSW theory is going to work out. I mean, the constructions are going to work out. Near, near the middle of the talk, like uh, Tom, I think, brought up 5.6, so maybe you did. Um, so one question. So do we not know like the things we know for 5.4 or so 5.6 is it still open? No, OK. Like, so like, the reality, for instance. No, OK. So, so to understand, uh, I mean, to understand 5.6, I think, would require understanding uh, the scaling limits of the tricritical point, okay. which is a hard question. Um, and there already. Triviality in 3D, it's really not clear. I mean, the mechanism for triviality in 4D and above is related to non-section of, of random walk. Okay, in 4D, it's much more subtle, but it's still uh, some sort of multi-scale non-section. -non Whereas in 3D, it's really not, I mean, I, I don't it's know. The probability of the three blocks on it, oh, there's no common point for three, for three of the independent blocks. Right, and, and I mean. That's, that's the five, that's the five, six triviality. Right, and probably what's happening is the zeros are repelling you, but that's hard to make uh, rigorous, right? I, I mean, I think it's interesting. I, I don't know. I think, that, I mean, I don't know. I forget what the status of it is. I think this was done by Slade and, uh, and Barschmidt. No, but this is for a weak coupling. I mean, this would, yeah. yeah. So, but there they don't use, uh, they, didn't, they, don't, they don't really use anything related to random current or no, no, BFS. No, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's your normalization. Right, but if you if you want to attack the full thing, you're going to want to understand it for random current, really, uh, because the loops are. I won't be a random current anymore. I mean, you know, you, you, you're not, not going to be so lucky. Uh, yeah, exactly. You get inequalities, and you, you see, like there is a random current, but there's no exact switching. So then you need to control error terms in that, and the error terms are not small. They are relevant, in probably relevant. I mean, yeah. they are uh, otherwise. If they aren't relevant, then you would expect triviality for easy. So right in 3D, which you don't. So so, so clearly there's something non-trivial there. I'm focused on the critical properties. Are there some interesting limiting models as you take beta and delta to infinity or zero or minus infinity in a certain uh, dependency between them? Something that leaves you with uh, non-zero entropy. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I know that the off-critical uh, the off-critical model has been studied in in 
pinning and wetting models a lot because you have a zero phase which which changes <coughs> behavior quite a lot, but I, I don't know. How to do that. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> Any more questions? Okay, well, let's uh, thank Trish again. Thanks.